Welcome to the Door of Light, you're with Te Manua. I'm going to take you back to a part of my training back in Perth uh, when I was working with spirit to hone my own spiritual being and of course you know tested them all to make sure that they were God's messengers uh, was one of the priorities that I had and I hope you all have as well because there was no way I was going to work with anything other than uh, any, anyone that had come in spirit form of, from God's kingdom and from God directly. So in this particular case, I did have a very special, uh, what you would call a guide, uh, attend me. And that was someone that you might know as Hiawatha. Now he was a great orator and he was a man from the m north, much like Purimi, the friend in Komatua, the elder uh, from the north, uh, visited me. Now Hiawatha is celebrated even today as the peacemaker due to a very successful campaign to create a peaceful and prosperous society uh, where previously there had only been long years of violence and intertribal warfare. Pretty violent time. And he also had a mother of the nations and together they created a peaceful democracy among five tri tribes of the native um, peoples. And it was a true democracy that lasted hundreds of years, actually it lasted longer than hundreds of years. It was a very, very, very um, extended period of time of peace. It still exists today, and you may call it the League of Nations. And from this was crafted the American Constitution, and that was used as a model for the United Nations. So in lots of ways, we would assume his work continues today as a new confederacy where uh, it honours the authenticity, the um, autonomy of each individual member, be it a nation, a state, a tribe or a culture. But it hasn't happened like that now, has it? It's been hijacked. It's been hijacked by corruption. It's been hijacked by those that are following Satan's plan, not God's. And certainly, without the pure and true heart of an individual, you're going to get a corrupted version. So it's pretty important to realise what you're all working for. You see, many people think that the United States Constitution, which is based and formulated on God, was done by the forefathers. But the forefathers took it from the Native American Indians. It was a micronism of a planetary society with a great tree of peace and they planted this as the grounding that rooted the basis for all nations to coexist in friendship and harmony and for all parts of ourselves to come together for new ways of being. So they allowed for growth. It was a deep symbolism that was placed that would remind everybody in the future and keep alive the great tree of peace and its truths, its wisdoms, its heart. And above the great tree of peace, Hiawatha envisioned an eagle whose far-seeing eyes could be alert to the slightest sign of danger to the greater tree's roots and thus peace. So that great tree whose Four white roots of truth would spread throughout the world in the four cardinal directions, would carry the news of this peace. Does that remind you of someone? It should do, because of course it's founded in God. Those roots could be traced back to this um, source tree by any nation or people yearning for peace, consolation and kinship. So Hiawatha's world centred itself on the well-being of all people. The sorrow of one became the sorrow of all. And the kinship and, and 
and the blessings of all beings was regarded as the potential the great spirit had implanted in the human heart. So I sat uh, in this training period with Hiawatha and before, just before I left to come back to Perth, I had to fill in some time. So I bought a uh, statue of uh, a Native American warrior who reminded me of Hiawatha and I sat there painting it. And so, of course, because I was painting it, I could put the colours that I wanted onto the statue. But the thing that I didn't uh, really stop to think about until I'm now here talking to you was that I painted the circle with the heart in it. And that is how Hiawatha had actually presented himself to me uh, at the beginning of the training. Uh, with an eye that went into a circle and in it was the heart. So you see, we get our visions and we might not understand them at the time. And much like prophecy, they are about the future. There's something to learn and something to grow with them. And they're true and they're real and they manifest into the physical. It's our interpretation of that which we have to discover by taking the journey. Too many people uh, look at uh, the words of a vision after it's been written down and interpret it. And they're going to be interpreting it from where? Their minds. The spirit is limitless and the heart is is an open doorway to God's kingdom. And God doesn't think like we do. So we need to understand that when we get a vision, when we see something in meditation, it's going to be very real. It's going to manifest. You're going to see it happen. And you need to understand that interpreting it is not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to live it. Walk out into the future. These are the signposts that God gives you. That inner compass that I talk about, your gut instincts. And it will actually be a point, a significant point on your path where that vision becomes important, becomes real. And therefore affirms and confirms that your information you are receiving in vision form is absolutely correct and the interpretation will not be what you thought it was when you first received it <laughs> so there you go there's a learning lesson for today about clairvoyancy because that simply means clear sight whether it's clear sight about uh, past events present events or future events. Future is foresight and that is a timeline that you can travel in spirit at your choosing. I would say though, don't put your mind in there, put your heart in there and open it to receive that which God is sending to you. Before you do, always make sure you're with the light or make Always make sure that you're with God and always make sure that those that God has sent to you that are attending you are from God. Never miss it and you'll be safe. Miss it once and you could find yourself in a battle with Satan. So you need to be very clear on that. It is about asking to receive. A very true uh, precept of spirit. One of the basic things of spirit and many of you know to do this by via prayer but prayer is about revering God asking to receive is a request from God so remember that when you are doing the spiritual development there's a lot to learn 
be open to the lessons and allow God to show you. So it's about being uh, tolerant and patient and having acceptance. No judging with the mind, just allowing it. Being tolerant because we're all impatient and we'd like to be there tomorrow. If we see that we're going to have some wonderful future, we want to be there right now. And of course, that brings the patience in because we need to have that patience. Some of these things that <coughs> have been shown to me over the four-year period in Perth are still waiting to manifest. Others have. And I can be honest with you right now and say I've been impatient like all of us. I mean, that is the human part of us, where we just want it to all happen. We don't want the struggles. We don't want the hardships. We don't want to go through accruing the knowledge. We, we don't want to do the hard yards. We just want it given to us on a plate, much like the young people of today who have been raised that they can have anything that they want. Uh, keeps the peace in the household. Here, you can have a computer, you can have a phone, you can have this, you can have that. And they haven't learnt to do the hard yards because you're not teaching them to do the hard yards. You're not doing the hard yards yourself. You tell me, right now, out there listening to me, how many of you have sat every day for four years, twice a day minimum, and meditated and written with God? There'd be very few amongst you. So that form of dedication is what is required. If you're going to do something, do it well and do it right. Let's do it right and let's do it right together. This is Tamanawa signing out.